Welcome to the Athlete Brand Advisor Podcast. Featuring advice and interviews about athlete branding. Learn how marketing, public relations, and broadcasting can grow your brand. We also have special episodes to talk about recent news, events, and anything in the world of sports. The podcast is sponsored by Pliable, a versatile marketing, PR, and broadcasting company that identifies opportunities and creates tailored content for its clients. Now it's time to roll. Here's your host, Greg Glenn. Thanks, and welcome to the Athlete Brand Advisor Podcast. In this episode, we're talking about fundraising and how athletes can use their name, image, and likeness to raise money and give back to their community. Today's guest is Neil Golson, and he is going to talk a lot about fundraising and some of the really creative ways that his company that he works for, Ribbon, helps athletes with this process and i'm really excited to have him on he's already been able to help out a pliable athlete he's a friend in my book neil welcome to the podcast thanks so much greg great to be here appreciate the invite absolutely as we get started you know one of the things i was thinking about when i started working with athletes was giving them a way to give back because once you start talking about taxes and 5013Cs and nonprofits, it gets a little messy when all they want to do is just give back. Right, and, right. And that's kind of one of the, the, when you go to our website, that's actually kind of the, the headline is philanthropy doesn't have to be that difficult, mm-hmm. right? It does seem like there's just so many barriers for the average person who, who wants to do something good, even if it's with their own money or whether they're looking to fundraise or tap into something else. Uh, the the it's the IRS has made it challenging. Yep, no doubt about that. And obviously, you enjoy this process. Uh, you've obviously been developing and scaling simple solutions for complex problems throughout your career. Uh, yep. You helped modernize uh, the world's most valuable brand, uh, Coca Cola. Uh, have some experience there. Also, really talked to, about flash parking, which I thought was a really cool project that I learned about. Uh, Then you also help really with these great products and kind of fragmented industries and emerging technologies. You've been able to help out with that. And then obviously in the last six months, really been building uh, this startup, transforming, as you say, the nonprofit landscape in the U.S., um, unlocking this philanthropic capital, unleashing social impact entrepreneurs. Uh, You're from Texas area right now. You've got a wife and uh, two kids. You know, talk to me just about, you know, kind of why you were so excited to be able to do what you do at Ribbon and what Ribbon is. Yeah. So uh, great, great kind of background overview there. What what I look at my career, kind of what what my superpower is, is I can see how technology is going to change large fragmented ecosystems. And so when, when, when I was, it had the opportunity to be running brands for Coca-Cola. I ran the Sprite brand, ran the Coke brand. Um, it was at the time that Facebook and Twitter were emerging. And so from our perspective, you know, Coke is sold through a bottler that then sells to a retailer that then sells to a consumer. And so suddenly with Facebook and Twitter and a billion dollar marketing budget, I could actually talk to my customers for the first time in over a hundred years of Coke's existence. There'd always been that middleman. And so suddenly we went from giant spending with American Idol, giant spending for the NCAA Final Four, and started to take half of that budget and say, let's engage with our consumers directly. Completely changed the way that Coke was doing marketing. And then marketing as a whole really changed over the next five years as we all started to figure out this social media, podcasting, computer in our pocket, leash, whatever you want to call it, right? And so absolutely fascinating experience. I was able to do that here in the U.S. and in China, um, worked worked there for my last couple of years with Coca-Cola, where, again, they were farther ahead on the technology adoption than we were and to be able to see how that all played out. From there, I had the opportunity to go to Tesla. Um, you know, enough's been said about kind of how Tesla's driven electric cars and how that's changing everything for every auto company and driver in the world. Um, and then went to flash parking where really we're able to bring technology and connected vehicles into these very valuable pieces of real estate that had no technology at all. So camera systems and Wi-Fi and communication and prepayments and navigation, getting ready for self-driving cars, all of that 
is massively transforming that overall business. And, and basically COVID proved that it needed to be updated. And so you went from a, a business that overnight had to lay off 90% of an industry with COVID and then replaced all of that with technology. And, and now has a much better, much more visible experience, much more connected experience. Now you buy your parking with your Ticketmaster tickets and keep it all on your phone when you show up, right? And so all of that went great. And as I kind of stepped back and said, okay, parking was fun. I kind of liked a little bit more of the doing good for the world that I got at Tesla. Um, and so I was looking for something that is getting ready to be disrupted with technology. And it is an ecosystem that is a little bit more of the public good angle. And so met with a bunch of different companies here in Austin uh, and found Ribbon. And, and interestingly, Ribbon's founder, Braden Feinberg, um, actually worked near me at Tesla. We didn't know each other at the time. Um, and so it was introduced to him and he and I, he and I just really hit it off. He had actually left Tesla to go take care of his mom who had a rare form of cancer. She's fine today, but as he was taking care of her at the beginning, he's like, what do I do? Let me try to start a nonprofit to raise money for my mom's cancer. His mom was on the mend and actually through chemotherapy by the time he was able to get through <laughs> that process. So 15 months later and almost $20,000 worth of legal bills and accountant bills to get your 501c3 status which is a little certificate sits over sits over his uh, his shoulder on his video when, when we meet every day, and he went to one of his advisors and described that process and was like, "That was the, the the craziest process I've ever been through." And they said, "Well, have you? Why didn't you do fiscal sponsorship?" And his answer, which was the same as mine when I was with him, with him at dinner, I'm like, "What is that? I've never heard of it." <laughs> and and it turns out it's something that's been in the IRS tax code for the entire time. It is a way for a 501c3 to essentially adopt a, a growing 501c3 and have them function as an independent entity, but with the guidance and protection and status of that 501c3. So that means you can take tax advantage donations, you can spend those on the public good, you can make, you can pay salaries to nonprofit employees, you can pay rent in a nonprofit office. You can do everything that you would do if you had your own 501c3 with the benefit of an existing 501c3 there to kind of be that, that angel on your shoulder. If you've got a question or if something's kind of, you don't know exactly how to deal with it. And so that relationship was very expensive. That was essentially 15 to 20% of the donations that came in had to go to that top level nonprofit for them to staff it, for them to do humans coordinating everything that needed to be coordinated. And so when Braden looked at that, he said, well, that's just multi-tenant cloud accounting. That's standard SaaS software stuff. It's what PayPal and Venmo do. And we can adapt that to fiscal sponsorship and build a software platform. And so that's what he started to do. The company raised money last November, um, built the entire platform in a matter of months, had first paying customers in January. And today we have over 300 nonprofit projects running on the platform um, that just so far this year have raised over $25 million together between them and are all just rapidly growing. So it has been a wild ride as we start to bring in the fragmented world of nonprofits, which also, by the way, nonprofits are the last people to adopt technology. Yeah. <laughs> and so this, this is a perfect opportunity. It's an interesting parallel to parking, right? It's the, hey, we all want to raise money. We all need to go do this. We have consumers that are ready to donate and be part of this. We have friends that are ready to donate and be part of this. But the structure itself was kind of locked locked away by the IRS. Yeah. And so we're we're unlocking all that, making it easier, dramatically reducing the price, kind of that whole SaaS software story. Wow, that, that's really incredible. And when I learned about it for the first time, I was blown away uh, being on a Zoom, a Zoom call with you and you showed me exactly what is possible. And I was really excited because when I work with athletes, they are looking to do amazing things. They want to give back to their communities. They have charitable organizations they would love to contribute to. Then all of a sudden, I'm working with Sadie Armstrong, who's a pliable athlete, going to go play Division One softball. And she has this vision of creating a foundation where she could raise money 
for athletes in Maine, her home state, who don't really have the money or the funds to be able to travel like you have to do if you're going to go play Division One softball, get recruited, go to showcases, all that stuff. And if you're a parent listening to this podcast right now, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so she knew exactly what she could do to help, which is create a foundation, be able to do that. However, she had no idea where to start. And she came yeah. to me with the idea. And I was like, you know what, Sadie, you got some great ideas. Let me connect you with Neil because yeah. he's going to be able to help you. And so that's exactly what we did. We've had several calls now with Sadie and just talk about what she was able to do, Neil, kind of as a case study and a great example. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed talking with her. I mean, when I think about what athletes can can do today, especially with these, these ever-changing but um, empowering NIL rules that are going across colleges and high school, what, what a nonprofit allows these folks to do is, is elevate their personal brand, add to their personal story. What's the rest of you outside of the stat sheet that your fans are going to want to get to know and going to become even more passionate fans and supporters about you? And so it really gives you the opportunity to tell a part of your story, like Sadie's experience coming from Maine, trying to get on a national radar as a superstar, but it's just challenging in up in Maine, right? Like that's, that was a hurdle that her and her family had to overcome. And now making a charitable project out of that allows that story to come through. And, and that'll come through for the rest of her life as she gives back, as she has a, a, a connection to that community. I guarantee you more folks in Maine will follow her collegiate career and going forward because of that connection and in in giving back aspect of it. It's also a great way to engage potential donors because lots of people have come out of Maine in all kinds of different industries or businesses and made their fortune. Yeah. Now having this parallel allows Sadie to connect with them, even if they didn't go to the college she's gonna go to, even if they didn't grow up in that same hometown, they have a shared experience. That they're like, you know, that was a challenge for me. I'd like to make sure Sadie is able to help people there. Um, the other part of this, and, and I'm sure these will come as you go, but th these are great ways to also attract brands and, and thinking about that story, whether it's a travel brand, uh, you know, whatever it fits into in terms of that story, it gives something to hang that brand connection that becomes authentic. And as a marketer, authenticity is it, right? Like that's what you're looking for. And your stat sheet's always gonna be authentic. But what else is authentic about you that you're communicating? And then the, the last piece is to, to make a quick impact. Um, we have programs on Ribbon that started overnight to it, from people in Maui when the fire hit to be able to raise money and take funds and, and go after it. In the last four days, I've created multiple um, organizations on Ribbon to help with what's going on in the Middle East right now and be able to get relief to the right people. And though that quick response is great, but when you're thinking about as an athlete today, you're really building a legacy and starting something today. I mean, this story with Sadie is certainly rooted in her current high school experience, but this will continue and be a passion for her for many years here. And, and that's really what we want to see is nonprofits should start to be part of your overall story. It should be something that is more than just a six months Eagle Scout project. It should be, what do you stand for? And so we ha also have uh, professional athletes operating on Ribbon today where so-and-so's foundation and, and they use that to channel fan, fan donations, to channel deals when they're negotiating with companies for their own sponsorship deals, you know, make your core deal so that you get paid and then add on a, oh, and I would like X to be donated to my foundation to do part of the public good. These brands are used to that ask. And if you don't have that charitable angle, you're just leaving money on the table, not necessarily for your pocket, but it's certainly at the end of the day, all those other benefits that I mentioned come with the fact that that brand is going to do that. And that helps you tell your broader story. It helps you engage wealthy alumni. It helps you connect to the community. And so all of that came through with Sadie. So we we're actually able to pair her with, um, we work with about 40 different nonprofits on our Ribbon platform that take new projects. Um, we have about 40 more that just operate their current projects. 
And so what we do is we have a simple application. Sadie and her mom filled it out in about 15 minutes. What's the mission? What's the vision? How do they plan on raising money? How do they plan on spending money? And then they submit that into our marketplace. And so multiple ones of our 501c3 partners reached out, starting engaging with Sadie, starting getting a better understanding of that. She found a great match with the Imprint Group. And Imprint is one of our sponsors that actually focuses on athlete foundations and entertainer foundations. And so they're running those in the background. They're the philanthropic advisors that can tap into some big money um, pools. They've got other sources. They also help kind of get other celebrities to show up at other celebrities' events and kind of help each other out and those kinds of things. So those are the sponsors that can really start to help you think through, okay, how do I do this on a bigger scale? You got to have the core idea and it's got to be authentic like Sadie did, but sponsors can be that extra juice in the whole thing that can unlock a lot of knowledge that otherwise you'd have to either figure out by trial or you'd have to pay a lawyer and accountant for. And so now all of that goes back into focusing on making this thing happen. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. And you talk about Sadie, obviously I'm very close to that story, but talk to me about maybe your biggest success story or a story you like, you know, that you've experienced. Yeah, I had the opportunity to to, uh, to present a couple of weeks ago in New York to a, to a room of about 40 pre-IPO companies. And I think one of the interesting things when we think about the level of change that needs to happen in the world today, you know, even hearing a company to say, hey, we're going to donate 1% of our profits or, or something like that. There's a kind of that 1% pledge that both wealthy folks and wealthy individuals as well as corporations are trying to do. It's not going to get it done. I mean, I mean, we've got so much opportunity in the world that that we need to address and and that things that need to be taken care of. And so, to me, one of the conversations that we had with that group was, how do you think about doing good that achieves your overall co- corporate mission? And so, we have several companies that have created kind of what we call a sidecar charity that then is able to actually demonstrate the public good of the product. So we have a a company that is focused, the business is around rebuilding your credit score and your credit rating. As a public good, they went out and bought credit card debt. And as the public good started forgiving that credit card debt, and then actually as that public good sidecar charity forgave people's debt, then obviously it was a hey, we've forgiven your debt based on the funds we've raised because you meet some profile, you know, kind of like a scholarship award. And we now that your debt is forgiven, we'd love to introduce you to our partner company that can now help you rebuild your credit. So it became the marketing engine of the core company by starting a charity to demonstrate the power of what they were doing. And those examples just keep going. Another one is Flexport. Flexport today is the largest humanitarian aid logistics company in the world. Flexport is a flexport.org is their sidecar charity that they use for UNICEF shipments and everyone can donate. So when someone calls the Red Cross and says, I want to donate, depending on how much it is, the Red Cross says, thank you, here's your receipt. Or they say, okay, you're donating this specifically. We actually have the money we need for the supplies but we need the logistics. So please route your donation to flexport.org and that will pay for literally the tanker that takes supplies to Ukraine. And so that helps their core business, but it is the public good, it is the demonstration. Um, Icon here in Austin, that is the uh, building homes on site, that's the machine built homes, massive public benefit for urban housing. And so they needed a way to have a sidecar charity to take funds to fund low-income housing and build low-income housing, but it demonstrated their building capability. And so all of these things, so it doesn't necessarily drive profit for the core company, but it drives the overall impact demonstration. And I think that's, that's kind of going back to the athlete piece of this is, What is that authentic story that you want to be involved in, that you want to be associated in, that tells the world about your core purpose and who you are? Same thing in the corporate world. In all those examples, the charity is demonstrating the power of what that corporation's product and services can do. And that's that magic cycle that that if you can unlock, it's not about then tithing 1% to charity. It's 
how much can I do this to grow my overall benefit personally in my for-profit part of my world and in my nonprofit part of the world to demonstrate to the public good? So those are some of my favorite examples because they're massive scale and they're, they're take a little bit of creative thinking, right? It isn't just, I want to raise money to donate it to this. It's, I want to raise money because this thing is important and authentic to me and it's important in, and to my product and it's important to my future. And that's really where Sadie kind of checked all of those boxes because that story was personal. She is the only one that's going to go help other softball players in Maine actually get off the map, right? Or get out of the state. And so that's unique to her. And so we've got, you know, save the three-legged dog animal shelters on ribbon. We've got everything down to feed the homeless and homeless shelters. And all those things are fantastic. And that is the core of our business. But to me, the ones are where that, that magic cycle really kicks in. Well, you've certainly found a good one in Sadie. She has uh, done amazing work and will continue to do amazing work with you. So I'm really excited to see where that heads. Uh, let's talk about, you know, for an athlete today that wants to get in touch or learn more, you know, yeah. what should they do? Yeah. So easiest way, go to our website, getribbon.org. Um, I'm sure Greg, you'll post that in the in the notes when this goes out. Um, request some time, shoot me an email, happy to walk you through the platform. But essentially the process is there's a very simple 15 minute application. What is it you're trying to do? How does it benefit the world? How do you plan on raising money? How do you plan on spending it? And then when you submit that on ribbon, you can match with any of those sponsors overnight. We've had programs created in hours. And as soon as that, that sponsor reads your application and feels comfortable that you have a plan and you know what you're doing and, and they're ready to move forward, they extend an offer, which is a fiscal sponsorship agreement within Ribbon. As soon as you both DocuSign that, which defines kind of the relationships, then Ribbon opens an account that is dedicated to this project that every, both sides can access through the software platform. And from there, you can create giving forms that you can put on your website. You can create links or QR codes that you could put on stickers on water bottles. Um, and then you can create credit cards to start spending the money that you've raised or do bill pays or reimbursements to make sure that all that money is actually utilized and going to the right place. So super quick process. Again, the comparison, uh, Greg, sounds like you went through this as well. The comparison is about a year and a half and $20,000 to start your own nonprofit. And by the way, then that, that's not it. You still have to pay an accountant and a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And the great thing with Ribbon is that's $99 a month at 3.5%. And that takes care of everything. So that takes care of all the tax filings. That takes care of all the compliance, all of the status, all of the software access, all the spending. Everything that you need is packaged up into that super easy, low monthly payment that then you can just start doing good and start receiving that, that those NIL benefits, start talking about your story and all of that's up and running in a matter of days. Yeah. And I can attest to that. You've been fantastic to work with, you know, when Sadie came to me with the idea and I'm so glad that I had met you first because you're right. I, I had looked into this and I'm like, oh, this is going to get real tough. But yeah. then we met, you did make it very easy. Uh, Sadie's been thrilled. I'm so excited to see what she's going to do next. And I also yeah. think kind of too, to, to close the loop on this, really, it gets back to the athlete's brand, right? So like yeah. when they have to go and you've got to say to, a, you know, a sponsor, you know, hey, are you willing to support this athlete and what they want to do with their charity and that kind of thing? Your brand better be in line when they look at you on Instagram and when they look at your profile and things like that. As you said, it's that authenticity piece. So I think that's really an important piece. They're not just going to hand out money to anybody. No, no. And, 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 and certainly they're looking for the authenticity to make sure you're top of the stat sheet too. But that's, that's, the, uh, that's the extra, right? That's the piece that no matter what's going on, no matter what's going on in your career, no matter what's going on with an injury, that piece always remains as the part of your authentic story that you really want to focus on. Yeah, well, I appreciate your time. Uh, you've been terrific. Again, for people that want to learn more, uh, you can actually go to getribbon.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. Uh, Neil, thanks again for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And keep up the great work. Thanks, Greg. Talk to you soon. All right. I'm Greg Glenn. Glad you could tune in and stay pliable, my friends. Thanks for listening to the Athlete Brand Advisor Podcast. 
Be sure to check out the show notes from today's episode and catch up on recent episodes at pliablemarketing.com. We also encourage you to share topics and guest ideas by emailing our production staff at pliablemarketing at gmail.com. We love hearing from our loyal listeners and athletes who want to grow their brand. So jump in and be part of the podcast because that's how we roll. 